What's up guys? For today's video, we're going to be hot wiring the coil on my 3000 GT. So since I fixed my uh, supercharger belt slip issue, uh, you know, I'm getting about 10 PSI. It's enough to cause what feels like a misfire uh, when I'm heavy load, wide open throttle. If you watch my last video towards the end, about the time that I got to 10 PSI and I've had to let off the throttle, you couldn't hear it, but I could feel the uh, misfire. Now, 99% sure it's because my batteries were getting weak. Um, so I've got some new batteries to put in this. But while I'm uh, doing this work, uh, I decided to just go ahead and hot wire the coil. Because these cars tend to have a problem with, and there's probably other cars that have the same problem. But, you know, when you're coming off your battery, say I'm running at 13.7 volts off my battery by the time... The uh, voltage gets to the coil. Um, it's done. It's dropped one, two volts or so. So you're not you're not always getting full power to your coils. And uh, when you're under heavy load, especially if you have a weak battery, um, you'll get spark blowout. Which I really shouldn't be experiencing that at 10 psi um, on a uh, 10 to 1 compression engine. But you know I'm I got the issue. I'm putting new batteries in it, but I'm just going to hot wire the coil just to just to uh, not have to worry about it. So this, uh, I'm going to show you what we're getting ready to do. So on the coil itself, there is a red wire right here. That's what gives it this 12 volt feed on the back side of the plug on the harness side. It's a black and white wire. So we're going to cut into this wire and use the signal off of this to trigger our uh, relay, which, uh, in this case, I got a uh, four prong, four prong, um, 30 amp, turn that where you can see it, uh, 30 amp relay. And then what we're going to do is the 86 side is going to be on the uh, black and white wire on the harness side. Then 85 will go to ground. So when I turn the key on and get ready to start the car, it's going to get a 12 volt signal across these two, causing it to connect here on my 30 amp circuit. So we'll run a 12 volt uh, power feed here, and then this side, number 87. So 30 will be 12 volt power feed, and then 87 will go back to the red wire down here, which will give me my full power. So on this car, when I did all this work to it i put in one of these uh power distribution blocks here uh, which is very handy um because i can hook multiple things up to it so i got my battery power going to it i got an amp wire this is my uh, hot wire to my fuel pump this is the accessory wires that come on the car that actually go up to the original battery terminal and then um and then I have a wire down here that I need to hook up, which is uh, going to my uh, the power to my glow shift gauges. So I'm just going to run another uh, 12 volt positive off this. Uh, I think I got 14 gauge wires what I'm going to use. And then that'll give me my full power source here. So let me get into this, get some, cut some wires. And then I'll kind of show you step by step how I'm putting everything together and then where I'm going to mount my relay. All right, so I went ahead and unplugged the plug, and this is the black and white wire that I was talking about right here. Um, it's always a good idea, I didn't mention earlier, to uh, disconnect your battery anytime you're playing with wiring. Um, you need to trim some of this uh, uh, shielding that they had on there to get better access at this wire. But, you know, as always, I caution people when you're working on, uh, especially 90s JDM cars, is be careful. Because, uh, you know, all these plugs, wires, uh, you know, the, the stuff they use to protect the wires is all really brittle. Um, so you just have to be careful. Move slow. Sometimes put a heat gun on it to soften it up before you really start torquing or twisting things. Because uh, they will crack on you. But thankfully, this car being a 99, um, everything's still fairly pliable. Uh, the plugs, not so much, but... Um, I've replaced a lot of them over the years. So let's get into cutting some wires. All right, so this is what the uh, end result of the splice into the harness looks like. 
I used um, non-insulated uh, butt connectors. Um, and then I used uh, marine uh, heat shrink tubing that has like an adhesive inside of it to keep them waterproof. So um, the red one will be the power coming uh, straight 12 volts from the battery. And then this, uh, the black one, um, that is of course the signal wire that will be going back to the relay. Um, no good way to really, I can't heat shrink tube this. I'll just have to tape it up, put a little zip tie to hold it together. Um, and then we'll work on the relay side. All right, so I got all my wiring done. I ended up using uh, slide connectors instead of buying a plug. But uh, you can see this wire right here. It runs off my power distribution with a 30 amp fuse. The red one is the one that goes back to my coil for the constant 12 volts. I have a ground wire right there which I grounded to a bolt underneath here that holds on my fuse box and then from there I got my 12 volt signal wire which that is uh, heat shrink together I ran both those wires and they're they're just kind of looped down through here and then they connect into that plug right there so what I'm gonna do with this relay now is there is a six millimeter bolt hole here i don't even remember if any if anything ever went to that since i modified so much stuff but i'm going to take this relay down here bolt it right there out of the way and then i'll put my batteries in and we're gonna fire up maybe take it for a spin <laughs> 